So far in our discussion on carbohydrate molecules, we focus on the individual monomers of sugars we call monosaccharides. Now we're going to discuss how we can actually connect these individual monosaccharides together to form larger carbohydrate molecules. And to begin, in this lecture, we're going to focus on disaccharides. Now, generally speaking, what exactly is a disaccharide? Well, a disaccharide is a carbohydrate that consists of two individual monosaccharides which are connected by a special type of linkage, a special type of bond we call the O-glycosidic bond, which we introduced in the previous lecture. Now, to demonstrate what types of disaccharides we can have and the types of O-glycosidic bonds that we can have in nature, let's take a look at the three most common types of disaccharides. So, these are maltose, lactose, and sucrose. So, let's begin with maltose, and this is what a single maltose disaccharide actually looks like. So, a maltose disaccharide consists of an alpha-D-glucose in its cyclic form bound to another alpha-D-glucose also in its cyclic form. And the binding takes place between carbon number one of the first glucose and carbon number four of the second glucose. Now, both of these molecules have the alpha anomeric configuration, and more specifically because carbon number one of this first glucose has the alpha anomeric configuration, so this oxygen basically points in the opposite direction downward with respect to where this group points upward, then this special type of O-glycosidic bond in maltose is called the alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage or glycosidic bond. So alpha designates the configuration of this first anomeric carbon of glucose number one. One four means we have a bond between the first carbon on the first glucose and the fourth carbon on the second glucose. So, in maltose, two D-glucose monosaccharides are linked via an O-glycosidic bond that exists between the first carbon of the first glucose and the fourth carbon of the second glucose. And as I just said, since carbon one of the first glucose has the alpha anomeric arrangement, we call the bond an alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond. Now, where exactly does maltose actually come from? Well, maltose itself is formed when we actually break down starch, and starch is the polysaccharide that is stored in plants, and we'll discuss starch in much more detail in the next lecture. Now, when we in, so when we ingest starch, we break down starch into these maltose disaccharides, and when maltose makes its way into the brush border of our small intestine, we have these special digestive enzymes we call maltase molecules. And maltase is the enzyme that is responsible for digesting and breaking down these alpha-1,4 glycosidic bonds within maltose. So when maltose arise of the br when maltose arrives at the brush border of the small intestine, an enzyme called maltase hydrolyzes maltose disaccharides into their individual glucose constituents, and then those glucose molecules can be ingested into the cell. Now, let's move on to the second common type of disaccharide we call lactose, and lactose is the disaccharide that is found in milk. So lactose is disaccharide that is found in milk and which consists of two individual monosaccharides. The first monosaccharide is galactose, and more specifically, it's the beta-D-galactose, while the second molecule, the second monosaccharide, is the alpha-D-glucose. So, let's take a look at the structure of this lactose molecule. So, notice the linkage, just like in this particular case, is also between the first carbon of the first sugar molecule and the fourth carbon of the second sugar molecule, but notice that our bond on this anomeric carbon of the first sugar is 
or has the beta arrangement. And what that means is this bond points upward in the same direction as this group, which also points upward. And that's why we call it the beta anomer of D galactose. And because of this, this linkage is known as the beta 1,4 glycosidic bond. So we have a bond between carbon 1 and 4, but because this points up, not downward, this is the beta arrangement. And so we have the beta 1,4 glycosidic bond. Now in humans, we also have an enzyme, or at least most people have an enzyme known as lactase that breaks down this lactose into the individual constituents galactase and glucose. In bacterial cells, the enzyme is called beta-galactosidase. And so these two enzymes are responsible for breaking down this same energy source in different organisms, one in humans and the other in bacterial cells. And finally, let's take a look at sucrose. Now, sucrose is what we call table sugar. And sucrose is the mobile form of carbohydrates that is found in plants. And we obtain sucrose from cane plants or bead plants. So sucrose, just like lactose and maltose, is a disaccharide. And sucrose consists of two individual monosaccharides. One of them is the glucose and the other one is fructose. And fructose exists as a five-membered sugar. So sucrose is a disaccharide that consists of an alpha glucose bound to a beta fructose. Now, unlike in this particular case and this particular case where the bond is between carbon one and carbon four, the bond in, in uh, sucrose is between the two anomeric carbons on the two different sugar molecules. And this happens to be a bond between carbon one of glucose, the first sugar, and carbon two of the second sugar, the fructose. So this is alpha D-glucose in its cyclic form. So we have carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six. And the arrangement here is the alpha arrangement because this bond points uh, downward in the opposite direction to where this group actually points to. Now, this is our beta D fructose, and this is carbon number one of the beta D fructose. So this is carbon number two, carbon number three, four, five, and six. And notice that this entire group points downward, which is the same direction as this group points. So this group points downward, this group points downward. And so for the fructose, this is the beta anomer because of the arrangement of this anomeric carbon. So this carbon one is the anomeric carbon of glucose, and this carbon two is the anomeric carbon of fructose. And because we have a bond between two anomeric carbons, this is called the alpha-1-2 glycosidic linkage. And because both of these anomeric carbons essentially have a bond like shown by the blue linkage here, this uh, sucrose, this disaccharide, is an example of a non-reducing sugar. So what exactly is a non-reducing sugar? Well, as we discussed previously, a non-reducing sugar is a sugar that when mixed with some type of oxidizing agent will not react via an oxidation reduction reaction. On the other hand, if we have a reducing sugar, when a reducing sugar is in the presence of some type of oxidizing agent, it will be, re uh, it will be oxidized, it will react in an oxidizing oxidation reduction reaction. Now, maltose and lactose are examples of reducing sugars, and that's because if we examine this sugar here and this sugar here, if it opens up into its open chain form, it will have an aldehyde group, and aldehyde groups are capable of reacting with oxidizing agents. On the other hand, in sucrose, because both of these anomeric carbons are essentially occupied as a result of this bonding, none of these sugars will be able to open up into their open chain conformation that contains a free aldehyde or a free ketone group. And that means because there is a lack of this reactivity, this will be a non-reducing sugar. So sucrose is an example of a non-reducing sugar, while maltose and lactose are examples of reducing sugars.
So again, unlike maltose and lactose, which are reducing sugars, sucrose is a non-reducing sugar because neither glucose nor fructose within this sucrose molecule can be transformed into an open chain conformation with a free aldehyde or a free ketone group. And so these cannot be oxidized in the presence of an oxidizing agent. Now, just like we have an enzyme in our small intestine that breaks down maltose and lactose, we also have an enzyme in our small intestine that breaks down sucrose. And this enzyme is called sucrase. So sucrose is broken down by an enzyme we call sucrase that is found on the brush border of our small intestine. 